Let's talk about reinterpret cast. It is a tool that you should use sparingly. It does have its uses. They are few and far between, but uh, very handy. The places where I use reinterpret cast the most is when reading and writing binary data to disk. In game programming, it's very common to I have to save game state and those kind of things and you don't want to do a lot of seeking on disk so we, we generally do one or at least a minimal amount of reads but then we get all this data like different data types and classes and structures and things and so we have to interpret those those bits essentially uh, directly and the fastest most efficient way of doing that is by using reinterpret cast so anyway that's that's uh that's where I use it the most, and um, hopefully you do too, because there, there are some other kind of outlying ways of using it, but but for the most part, that's that's where I've seen it used the most. So you notice here I've made a cow struct. Remember, the difference between a struct and a class is a struct defaults to public. That is the only difference. Um, this cow is declared with two integers, uh, a gender, or no, sorry, <laughs> two integers, a char, and then a bool. So we like objects because we can say cow or we can say car or we can make up these objects and have these objects do different things and that's closer to how us humans think. But in the end, a computer is literally just bits and bytes and the nice thing about C++ is if you want to think in objects, you can and if you need to think in bits and bytes, you can as well and it's very common to have to do both. So, so your uh, previous programming courses to this one should have gotten you very comfortable with objects and now we're getting a little closer to what really happens on the processor. So when I define a cow, this puts, uh, this takes up enough RAM on the stack to place this cow. We saw that in an earlier video. And the size of cow will be the size of an int plus the size of an int plus the size of a char plus the size of a bool plus a little packing, padding thing which you'll see in some other uh, videos. But for now, so you can just think of it as two ints, a char, and a bool. And it's literally laid out like that in RAM. The compiler, whenever I say cow, cow, the compiler says, okay, well, that really means int, int, char, bool. And so that's how much RAM, plus a little packing, some hand waving here. Um, that's how much RAM that is taken up on the stack. Uh, just to save time in the video, I also assign some values here. Uh, Moog count eight, leg count, this cow, something's going on, maybe some mad cow disease, who knows. Uh, female cow, and we already butchered the cow, made for a good summer barbecue. Um, I'm going to, uh, well, let's just do this first. I can, as normal, print these different field values. Um, but as you saw in an earlier video, I can also take a pointer, or char, <laughs> excuse me, a cow pointer, cow pointer, gets the address of cow, and using that cow pointer, if I bring this up, I can dereference it using the arrow notation I showed you in that previous video and access all these fields. Um, so that's fine and dandy. Now let me just show you a reinterpret cast trick here, which this is a contrived example again. Generally this is this is something you shy away from, but definitely something you need to understand. So basically a reinterpret cast tells the compiler to reinterpret, that's why we call it reinterpret cast reinterpret the data being pointed to as something else. So cow pointer, for example, points to a cow, which means it has two ints, a char, and a bull, and, a, and the first int is named moo count, the second int is named leg count, so on and so forth. Um, but, but just as a trick here, int star int pointer gets a reinterpret cast I want to reinterpret cast to an int star cow pointer. So if I say C out int pointer in line, and just for before I print out the value of int pointer, remember int pointer stores an address, not the actual value. Um, I'm going to print out cow pointer. So let's just print out these these two addresses right here um, until this thing to run. Notice the addresses are identical. And no, there's nothing wrong here. It's just the, the reinterpret cast only has meaning really at compile time to us in compile land. We are now interpreting the data pointed to by cow pointer. We're interpreting it as an int pointer. Anyway, so since it is an int pointer, let me get rid of uh, 
this cow pointer print statement. Since it is an int pointer, or just a pointer in general, I can dereference it as normal, which will take us to the RAM pointed to by int pointer. Well, remember that RAM originally is a cow. But if, we, if you think about this, and I encourage you to pause the video and think about it, what's going to print out when I print out what is being pointed to at int pointer? Good time to pause, think about it, this will be a good learning experience. Okay, hopefully you paused. Um, hopefully, well, let's just let's just print it out. Let's let's run it and look at it. It's an eight. Well, look at all the values that we stuffed into our cow here. If you look, it doesn't take very long. You see, moo count is eight. Well, moo count is the first um, piece of data defined in a cow instance. And hopefully that makes sense. So, of course, the first thing we're going to point to is 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 the first int. Well, now watch this, and I believe in a, in a previous video I, I did something like this, int pointer plus plus, it's called pointer arithmetic. And really, writing int pointer plus plus is the same as writing int pointer against int pointer plus one. And your intuition would probably think that it would add one to the address stored in int pointer. But the compiler actually provides some conveniences for us with pointers. Instead, what it does is it adds the size of whatever is being pointed to times the number we told it to. So in this case, it's 1. We told it to add 1. The size of an int is 4 bytes, not uh, 1 byte. And so int pointer it will actually add 1 to, or not 1, sorry, 4 to the address stored in int pointer. And just to prove that, I'm going to print int pointer before I do the plus plus, and let's print int pointer after we do the plus plus. Execute. Boom! So, <laughs> of course I had to take up two digits. <laughs> but C, let's see, C plus 4, well, if you think about it, A is 10, B is 11, C is 12, 12 plus 4 is 16, which bumps its neighbor, so A is going to go to B, and this wraps to a zero. So I added four to this address, uh, not just one, even though it looks like we're adding just one. Anyway, I'm going to, I'm going, uh oh, let's turn on an effect there. I'm going to shorthand this again, pointer plus plus. And uh, so let's print out, remember this one, print out the value of move count. I'm going to in, move in pointer over the RAM at move count. And again, I'm going to say, well, what's the int pointer pointing at now? Well, think about it. Just We just incremented that int pointer over move count, so that now it's pointing at the value of leg count. So let's run that. You see 5, which I believe this cow we did give this poor cow 5 legs. Okay. So then again, let me. Um, I'm going to get rid of these extra print statements just because we've seen them now and seen what they do. So I'm going to say int pointer plus plus again. Well, the first int pointer plus plus moved us over move count. The next int pointer plus plus is going to move us over leg count. I could consolidate these two, by the way, and say plus equals two. And that's going to be two times the size of an int, because that's how pointers work in pointer arithmetic. So now int pointer is actually pointing to the four bytes defined by gender. And remember, gender is a char, and char is one byte, and then the next char is going to be my bool. Uh, the compiler does some packing here. And so if I see out, you know, let's let's look at what's being printed out by int pointer. Um, run that. And we get some uh, convoluted negative number. And that's because uh, this, this number is actually, if, if we go and we pull apart the bytes that are being looked at in that whole four byte setup, that's th that's what the byte values would be in decimal. Um, but instead, I don't want to do all that work, so let's just reinterpret cast again. Remember, int pointer is now pointing to the gender portion of our cow. So I'm just going to shove a reinterpret cast. And notice how ugly these casts are. Uh, I think one of the reasons they made them so ugly is to make it very apparent that, hey, are you sure you want to do this? One nice thing about casting is it allows us to do things we probably shouldn't do, but maybe we should know is better to do. Uh, allows us to blow a hole in our foot if we wish to. Anyway, big and ugly, big warning. <coughs> Use sparingly. Uh, let's reinterpret int pointer as a char pointer, because I know what int pointer is pointing to is a 
is a character which represents my gender. Let's run it. Boom. There's our F. See our F? That's kind of neat. Uh, of course, I didn't save that value away, so let's save it away. Char star C. Uh, let's, 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 let's be more uh, explicit here. Forgive my repetition of words as I talk and type and code at the same time. Anyway, now I can say C out star char pointer. And this is this is no different than what I did before, except I'm storing it in char pointer uh, value. F, very good. So now I want to move that char pointer over gender. So let's just say char pointer uh, plus plus and C out. Uh, well, you know what? Let's let's uh, let's just move this print statement down here. So now char pointer is pointing at is butchered, which is true. And booleans, I mean, there's no true or false. It's either one or zero in C++. And really, that's how computers store booleans anyways, it's just one or zero. But uh, let's, you know, I'm just curious here, interpreting as a char, what are we going to get? Let's run it. Oh, we get a convoluted smiley face, which if I looked up a, a character table, uh, maybe I'd see that's, that's a one, who knows. Um, anyway, I know it's really a char, so let's just do our trick again. Reinterpret cast. Uh, it's not a char, it's a bool, forgive me. So that data, that RAM, uh, I want you to reinterpret it as a bool, because I really know deep down inside it's a bool. You don't know, compiler, but I know, because I'm doing some weird things with you. That sounds a little awkward. Anyway, look at that, one. One is true. In fact, we can even prove that. Let's, uh, let's go down here and see out true. And line, we get, we get one instead of T-R-U-E. Anyway, reinterpret cast. Essentially, the gist, we have a pointer to some RAM. We want to reinterpret that RAM as something else. It's purely a compile time thing made for the programmer. It does not change the address at all of the actual pointer value.